Hi guys! So from the title you'll already have guessed that this video is a review of Once Upon a Time Season 5 Episode 2 The Price. Oh my god! I loved this episode and I simultaneously hated this episode because it just it gave me so many emotions that I felt completely conflicted and this storyline I just I just want to kind of go and hug the writers and be like well done guys, you have really done an awesome job here because you have succeeded in making me feel everything that I could possibly feel about an episode within the course of one episode. As I've said many times before, from a TV scholarly kind of point of view, so from a former TV student who loves TV and to kind of analyse television and stuff, I just like can't praise this storyline enough. I think it's just been a genius turn and it's just, it's so exciting to see how they're completely turning so many things on their head. However, from a fan point of view and from an Emma fan point of view, this is just tearing me apart because watching her be so cold and distant, it's just, oh, it's just heartbreaking. So at the end of the first episode, we saw Emma in her dark swan attire coming into Granny's and basically telling them all that they were going to be punished for failing her and that she was now the dark one which was horrible. So in this episode, we are seeing her family and Killian and Henry and Regina all trying to kind of understand this and come to terms with this. Hook, of course, is just absolutely devastated and refuses to believe that he's lost her completely. So this was a brilliant episode for Colin O'Donoghue because he just got to show this, this sense of total desperation and just hurt that this has happened to the woman that he loves. Throughout the episode, we flashed between current time and Storybrooke, where we were seeing everyone, as I say, come to terms with Emma as the Dark One, getting introduced to Emma behaving like the Dark One, and seeing her in her new home, which apparently comes with being the Dark One, you get a fancy house, um, which I quite enjoyed when Kelly turned up and she was like, yeah, come on in, this is my place. Within the Storybook side of the episode, we saw that a lot of other people from Camelot, not just our Storybook people, but King Arthur himself and Guinevere and a lot of the other people from Camelot have been transported back to Storybrooke six weeks after the event and they're all kind of trying to get to grips with this new land. And in the flashbacks, we see them just after they've arrived in Camelot, kind of settling in and trying to figure out how they can ask King Arthur for help in finding Merlin without having to actually tell him that Emma is the Dark One. The problem is that in Merlin's prophecy, he has said that within this group of people who turns up, there will be a savior, and Emma's not really in a position to say that she is a savior. So at this point, Regina steps in and says, I'm the savior and I'm here to kind of save the day. I really enjoyed this role reversal. I felt that this was a really good moment for Regina because this is going to be a really big test for her. Um, and so that provided a lot of really good stuff for the episode, seeing Regina kind of battling with those kind of past demons and feeling like no one could really possibly believe that she was a savior. Something that Emma coldly throws in her face several times and says, come on, like everyone else knows you're not a savior, so why can't you see it yourself? So there was a lot of kind of inner turmoil for Regina in this episode when she's got people like Henry and Snow and Robin telling her, yes, we believe in you. And then she's got that kind of voice inside her own head added on to the fact that Emma's telling her no one believes it. So I felt this was a great episode also for Lana Perea. She did an amazing job of showing that kind of more vulnerable side to Regina that we don't always necessarily see and I really enjoyed that. So about halfway through the episode, a demon creature shows up, standard once upon a time, and snatches Robin and takes him away and Regina is not powerful enough on her own to get him back. She can't understand what's happening to him and why he's been taken and she believes that Emma is doing it to punish her. When she goes and talks to Emma, however, Emma is adamant that she had nothing to do with bringing this creature here and that it was Regina's price to pay. In Camelot, we discover that Percival, who is one of Arthur's men, recognises Regina, knows that she was the evil queen and actually witnessed her destroying his home village when he was a child. Robin runs in to save the day, ends up getting into this fight with Percival, who stabs Robin and then Charming jumps in and saves the day at the last minute and kills Percival. Regina is absolutely heartbroken that Robin is pretty much at death's door and begs Emma to save him. Kelly begs her not to use dark magic, he's not on board with this, but she feels that she can control it and she wants to do this for Regina, so she saves him and ultimately in doing that gets a bit of a taste of the power that comes with being the dark one. She then goes into a little bit of a panic, she spins round, she kisses Hook, which is a very nice moment, and then runs out of the room to be confronted by Rumpel, who points out that even True Love's kiss isn't enough to dampen that slight enjoyment that she had in using her dark magic. 
Towards the end of the episode, Regina's battling to save Robin and at the last minute, Snow and Charming jump in to help her and they fight him off together. And with the rest of them behind her, she has the power to get rid of the demon, save Robin and save the day. And it's that moment that I think Regina realises that having the backing of other people and having them support and believe in her is all she needs to become the saviour. In terms of Emma, Hook has gone to see her, he's gone to visit her and beg her to snap out of it basically begging her to tell him what happened and there's a moment where she does seem more vulnerable where she says I wish I could tell you and he's like you can tell me anything oh I'm so cute and then she just kind of she looks at him for a minute and you think is she going to break and then she just kind of goes back into her evil dark one mindset and basically brushes the whole situation off and tries to seduce him. I do now want to just talk about I, I wrote some notes last night on my phone um, this video is not going to be as organised as my future reviews because basically the timing is just not great and I'm doing this the minute I've got in from work. Um, but I did take a lot of notes which actually made me laugh quite a lot when I reread them because they're just like a ramble. One thing that I've written down that I really enjoyed was Emma's line, there's no good and bad versions of ourselves, there's just me because Regina's saying to her, I know the good you and I know that you're still in there. And Emma's kind of pointing out, being like, well, actually, no, there's, there, isn't a, there isn't a good me and a bad me. There's just me and these sides, to me, are all part of the same person, um, which Regina doesn't really like to hear necessarily. But Emma kind of points out that of all people, Regina should know that and recognise that. I enjoyed that line a lot because I felt like it's very reflective of what the entire show is about. And it's about the kind of darkness and light in every individual person and fighting for that kind of good side of you. And kind of highlighting that there are a lot of shades of grey and it isn't just that you get bad people and good people, that everyone has the capability to be not a very nice person or to be a really nice person and it all depends on the choices that you make within yourself. So I really liked that line, I thought that was an excellent line. There's so many good lines but that one I really particularly enjoyed. Um, what else do I have? Um, so many Captain Swan feels. Gotta just do the Captain Swan chat right now because just so many. What I really loved about this episode was the fact that we were seeing the characters six weeks later in this state of panic when Emma really has gone full on dark but we were also getting a chance to see them in Camelot in a kind of softer situation in the amazing costumes like Emma just looked stunning in that dress, that white dress with the floral crown and I really enjoyed all of that and that moment when Snow and Emma kind of came down the stairs and David and Killian were waiting for them, you know, at the bottom of the, the steps and it was all very romantic and fairy tale esque So I liked that a lot and I liked that we had those nicer kind of quiet moments for them when they were dancing and everything so it was quite nice and romantic and then back in Storybrooke we had this kind of much more tension filled situation. Something that I've noted down because I've watched this scene like at least six times already um, but the scene when he goes to visit her or he sort of says where are you and she turns up and says well you've just summoned me and takes him to the house. Um, I've got noted down, I loved that Hook was strong enough to walk away but also maybe just give in once. Just a thought. I'm so proud of him, it sounds ridiculous to say that you're proud of a fictional character but I genuinely am so proud that at that moment that she was saying I'm the dark one, I'm totally badass now and you know no one can mess with me but hey we can still hook up if you want and he was like uh no I'm walking away from this situation. I really love that he was strong enough to do that because you know that although it is Emma it's still not the Emma that he knows and loves and she wouldn't want him to kind of give in to her manipulation in that way so you know that he kind of did the right thing um so I was very very proud of him for that but also like just at one point throughout the whole Dark Swan thing, I'm thinking this would be a tremendous waste of excellent sexual chemistry so I think we just have to have one scene just at any point, just you know within the next you know say six episodes, just one moment where he goes to hell with it, why not, see how this goes and then he can sort himself out and be like yeah no we're not, we're not going down that road again. Just so much chemistry, just coming right off the screen so loved that. Other things that I've noted down were that I really liked that Mary Margaret and David slash Snow and Charming were more of a focus in this episode, they've been kind of left behind a lot of the time I felt lately so I liked that they got their moments when Snow could kind of talk to Emma and say oh I always wanted to take my own daughter to a ball like this and 
Charming could run in and save the day and give Henry dating advice and all that. I really enjoyed that. Those were quite sweet moments. I love the focus on Regina, um, the fact that she can be a saviour and that all she needs is the support of everyone around her and I love that they've kind of just turned everything so much around from season one where we've got Emma coming in to save the day and Regina fighting against it and we've got that all turned around now. It's oh, so good. Um, what have I got? Um, I really enjoyed Bale and Hook's chats because I quite like the fact that now she's got someone who understands and I said this to Roisin earlier on that like obviously I don't think that Belle would want someone else to go through what she had to go through with Rumpel but it must be quite nice to have someone kind of understand how hard it is and I loved her line saying that it's so much harder to love a dark one than it is to hate one. What else have I got? <laughs> Here I've got noted down, Henry has a crush, Marilyn's trapped in a tree, standard, yes, Marilyn is trapped in a tree, so that, I mean, standard once upon a time, of course the person who can save them all is trapped inside a tree, where else is he going to be? So I'm excited to see how they're going to get him out of there and I am pleased that hopefully it's going to be Regina who's kind of part of this, but obviously there's got to be a reason that it doesn't work out or Emma wouldn't be in the state that she's in, so... Don't know what's going to happen there, but I've got a good feeling about it. Or a bad feeling about it, if you know what I mean. Next I've got, hate, hate, hate seeing Emma like this, but Jane is amazing. Jane is amazing. Jane's always amazing. Emma at the ball with the floral crown. Beautiful. Hook at the ball with his face and all the leather. Just Hook in more ye olde times costumes is always going to be something nice to watch on screen. Regina showing her vulnerability and not knowing how to dance. I quite enjoyed that. I felt it was probably unlikely that she wouldn't know how to dance at all. Um, but I felt that that was quite nice because you never see Regina so completely like vulnerable and slightly embarrassed and kind of out of control like that. Um, she's always so kind of like calm and you know sassy that seeing her in that kind of awkward, oh this is so embarrassing, I don't know how to dance situation was quite fun and I liked that Charming kind of stepped in and saved the day there and that Snow was part of that when they've got such a complicated past I just liked that they could kind of be there for her in that situation. The Price of Magic idea I think is something that's always been quite prevalent in Once Upon a Time, it's always been something that's been focused on is this idea that all magic comes with a price and that you have to pay it and in this situation Regina saved Robin's life but didn't take another's and she used dark magic to do it, she used Emma's magic to save Robin's life and that leaves an imbalance and so someone has to die for you know to take Robin's place and Regina hasn't paid that and so I think I have a horrible feeling about that, what's going to come with that. If any of our main people die, I'm not going to be a happy bunny. Another little thing that I've got noted down is the idea of seeing things in our world as magical. Um, so the girl Violet, who's you know Henry's new love interest, I loved seeing her reaction to the jukebox and being like, is it magic? And I was like, see when you think about it, we never really think about how things in our world, like I'm sitting talking to a camera right now to record my face and voice to put on the internet. You know, aliens would think that that was magical, I'm sure. So I think we should appreciate the wonders of our world a little bit more than we necessarily do. The last thing that I have got noted down is obviously this connection between Excalibur and the dagger and what will happen if Emma manages to make Excalibur whole again. It sounds like if that happens then darkness will kind of take over all of the world because what Rumpel or Rumpel's version of the Dark One said to Emma was that the problem with you know, the dark ones before, that they've never managed to gain full control over everything because the light always manages to creep in and so the people they love, their family, their partners, their children have kind of managed to pull them back from that kind of precipice and in this case if you can join Excalibur with the dagger again then that won't be an issue anymore so I'm kind of dreading that. I love this connection. I forgot to mention this at all in my last video. I have no idea how I forgot to mention the fact that the dagger is part of Excalibur. Um, but it is, and so that connection I think is amazing. I'm really looking forward to how they kind of unravel this story. Um, and then the part that King Arthur has to play in that, because what happens if he joins Excalibur with the dagger, I assume that means that good things happen. Whereas if Emma does it, or whoever the Dark One maybe at the time does it, bad things happen. I don't know, I feel there's a lot of interesting stuff at play here so I cannot wait for the next episode. I'm sure it was obvious, I love this episode, I'm upset with the Emma situation but I felt that this episode took us along really nicely, we got a lot of new information that we needed and I cannot wait for 503. 
Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the episode and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you want to watch more of my Once Upon a Time reviews do hit that subscribe button so that you can get notified when I upload them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye! One of my favourite things about the episode was how they had Rumpelstiltskin, Enchanted Forest style Rumpelstiltskin as the Dark One voice within Emma so he...